Osteoarthritis, when the cushion or cartilage of the joint wears out, is a condition that does not have a cure. Knee osteoarthritis affects approximately 14 million Americans. As time passes, when you have osteoarthritis, you will feel more pain and stiffness and have difficulty walking. Mild and moderate pain can be treated with medication, physical therapy, joint injections, and walking aids. Losing weight can help too. When the pain becomes so severe that it adversely affects your quality of life and medications are no longer working, knee replacement surgery may be an option. Surgical options include total and partial knee replacements. In order to understand the difference between them, it is important to understand the anatomy of the knee. The knee joint is formed by three bones, the femur, or thigh bone, the tibia, shin bone, and the patella, the kneecap. These bones are connected to each other by ligaments, which help guide the movements of the joint. Tendons attach the muscles of the thigh and calf to the bones around the knee. The meniscus is the cushion of cartilage between the femur and tibia. In the healthy knee, these structures work together to move the joint. There are three compartments in the knee. The medial compartment, located on the inner side, the lateral compartment, located on the outer side, and anterior, located in the front of the knee between the kneecap and the thigh bone. When two or more compartments of the knee are severely damaged or worn, this calls for a total knee replacement. The orthopedic surgeon will completely replace or resurface the ends of the thigh bone, shin bone, and kneecap with metallic and plastic implants by affixing them to the bone. For some people, arthritis will affect only one of the knee compartments. You might feel pain in one part of the knee. This calls for a partial knee replacement. About 6 to 8% of patients with knee arthritis meet the criteria for a partial knee replacement. Only the arthritic, damaged compartment is resurfaced. The surgery can be performed through a relatively smaller incision than a total knee replacement and with less soft tissue damage and blood loss. For all these reasons, you will generally experience shorter surgical times, less pain, and a quicker recovery. During your initial visit, your surgeon will review your medical history, perform a thorough physical examination, and review all three compartments of your knee shown in the x-rays. Your surgeon might request additional imaging, like an MRI, before recommending a partial knee replacement. Patients who have a severe knee deformity, very limited motion, ligament damage, rheumatoid arthritis, and those who are obese may not be good candidates for a partial knee replacement. Your surgeon will review these and other factors to recommend the most appropriate treatment. Keep in mind that the goal is to relieve your pain and get you back to the activities you enjoy with the procedure that best suits your condition. In order to make sure that surgery can be safely done, patients undergo pre-surgery testing a few weeks prior to surgery. Tests include blood work, an electrocardiogram, and possibly others. A medical doctor will examine you and review your test results. Some patients with poorly controlled high blood pressure, diabetes, or other medical conditions may need to have the surgery postponed until these conditions are under control. An educational class or booklet will help you review all the aspects of your admission, hospitalization, and recovery. You will be admitted to the hospital on the day of surgery. Most knee replacement surgeries take from one to one and a half hours. Most people receive a spinal or regional anesthesia. You will probably also be offered a sedative so you can sleep during the operation. To help with pain control, your anesthesiologist may administer a nerve block. Your surgeon uses special tools to make sure the parts of your knee replacement are properly sized and aligned. Pain relieving medication is injected into the soft tissue of your knee and your knee is then sutured and bandaged. After the operation, patients remain in the recovery room where they are closely monitored. You will likely be given a pain medication tablet. With these different treatments throughout the procedure, the pain you have after surgery will be well controlled. 
You will remain in bed for a few hours until you regain feeling and strength in your legs. Afterwards, you will usually sit, stand, and begin walking with the aid of a walker or a cane. If your surgeon has determined that you are healthy and have a strong support system at home, you may be discharged to home on the same day. If you have other medical issues that need more attention or are of an advanced age, then you may be discharged after spending at least one or two nights in the hospital. You will do exercises to gradually improve your range of motion and muscle strength before and after you leave the hospital. You will need to be fully involved with the physical rehabilitation of your knee to achieve the best possible result. Working with a physical therapist several times a week for the first few weeks after surgery can help get you on track. Your surgeon will see you within a few weeks after surgery for an examination and follow-up x-rays. New exercises and instructions will be given as you progress. You should be able to walk without the use of a walking aid in about three to four weeks. While most normal function of your knee returns in the first two to three months, you should feel the maximum benefit of your surgery within one year. Knee replacement is highly successful at relieving pain and can help you get back to the daily activities you enjoy. You might even return to low impact recreational sports like hiking, biking, swimming, and playing golf. We offer a library of materials written and reviewed just for patients by members of the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons. Learn about caring for your joints, replacement surgery, traveling, and more at aahks.org.